Alright, welcome. This is Folklore Myths and Legends Washington, and I'm Jason Hennig. This is our first official episode, and I thank you very much for viewing. The today's subject of this episode is Princess Angeline, which I will miss say many times in the video as Princess Angela, which is incorrect. It is, in fact, Princess Angeline. Now, Princess Angeline was the daughter of Chief Seattle in the early 1800s, and she was born near Pike Place Market, and she died in the same place. Supposedly, because of her lifelong commitment to Pike Place Market, that is where she haunts now. And so, curious, our team decided to go down and investigate this area a little bit, to go ask some people about it and what was going on. So, thank you for joining us, and we'll get started now. So, today we are going to be investigating Princess Angela. Princess Angela was born in the 1800s, one of the daughters of Chief Seattle. Um, why would a Native American woman have the name Angela, you might wonder? Well, she was christened Angela by another woman who said that she shouldn't have such a savage name for having such a pretty face. Right. <laughs> and so she uh, changed her name to Angela, and that is what everyone started knowing her as. Around the area of Pike Place Market down in Seattle, she became very popular, very famous, a kind of almost in uh, in national icon, you could say. And uh, people would like help her carry her things, all sorts of nice things for her. And supposedly. Her ghost sits in the middle of Pike Place Market, um, near the flower vendors. Or the, um, the other place that she's been seen is by the wharf, where, by the ferry, where she will get onto the ferry and never get off. So, we are going down to Seattle now to go look into that. Established in 1907, Pike's Place Market is one of the most profitable areas in Seattle. From flinging fish to handmade leather journals, you can find almost anything searching from table to table. My team and I explored a little bit of the adventure of finding somewhere to park under $10. Pike's Place allows farmers and singles craftsmen and women to put their product onto the market. Since almost everything here is acclaimed world famous or world's greatest, it's easy to get lost in the people and miss the culture. After my team and I did a little sightseeing, we got down to business. Alright, so, in theory, this is where everything goes on. So, um, in theory she is sitting on a mat somewhere. She's typically, supposedly, sitting on a mat somewhere along here. There are stars in there. Are there? Yeah. Oh, yes, Ridden there are. off into two teams, myself and Katie, and James and Maddie, we attempted to cover more ground. And there are flowers over there, too. There are. So somewhere along this, this thing, I guess, there should be... She is where she shows up. Generally. So, in 
theory. James to interview a few of the flower vendors. Thank you. We're just asking people, and when we finally found someone who. That's just and came up and de Do they not know or are they not willing to talk about it? I don't know. Can we both? Oh, sorry. It would be funny if we asked the girl if she was her. That would not be funny. What? Asking an old person if she was her. No, no, I meant just like, um, like if we actually found the girl and we, oh. if we didn't realize it and we asked her. No, she sells baskets. So, in theory, she comes somewhere along the stretch, and we were looking earlier. Yeah, we were looking earlier, that, and uh, she... There's also flower vendors way down there, too. So... Does she sell anything else? She sells baskets and beads, I believe. At least baskets. And um, she will occasionally pray. Little, yeah. She will occasionally pray with her beads because she was Catholic. It's called the Rose Band. Yeah. She will pray with her beads. It's the same thing. They just keep on talking, don't they? They don't get they don't get offended if you ignore them. What? I was like telling Maddie that they don't get offended if you ignore them. That's good. Why would they? They get they're kinda used to it. Well, although we're not finding a whole lot of ghosts, there's this, there's certainly lots of interesting things you can get in Pike Place Market. Athenian lunch seafood. The jazz apple. The jazz apple. <laughs> Neither have I. There's some jewelry. Some more flowers. <laughs> yes. She's so the metal pig. It's possible. I honestly don't know where she sells baskets. Uh, just near the flowers. What is, what is that That's a person. Right, I was wondering whether it was a Yeah, there are actually three famous pigs. And we have the oxymoron section. Yeah, 
It had been a good look, but we didn't manage to find Princess Angeline anywhere in the market. So, we packed up our gear, waved goodbye to the beautiful sunset, and headed home. So, today was definitely a lot more inconclusive than we would have liked. But, I would, uh, it's kind of what I expected. It, especially with something like this that's very, very local lore, very small, a lot of people have heard about it. Uh, this is kind of how, kind of how I anticipated it turning it out. But that's alright, we definitely got a good view of Pike Place Market, which I do highly encourage you visit. But, and I also encourage you to check out the wharf, which we did not get to not get to the ferry terminal, but, uh, this, this, the, nat the nature of this particular legend made it very difficult to investigate. We should be doing some, a lot more interesting ones in the future. Thanks again for watching Folklore Myths and Legends Washington. Um, again, this was kind of, because of the nature of the legend and it being in a very urban environment, it was very difficult to get a proper and full look at the area. Um, especially with an environment like Pike Place Market, you end up not being able to get a full investigation. You don't get to look at it quite as thoroughly as you'd like. Since, one, there's so many people there, and two, since it's a very, a very, like it's a community all on its own. And so it kind of has, it generates its own culture, obviously. So it makes it very difficult for you to get anything particularly conclusive. As much as I'd have loved to find a ghost or find evidence of a ghost. So yes, I do encourage you to go down to the wharf. I also encourage you to um, get this book, Seattle's Market Ghost Stories, by um, Mercedes Yeager, and this has Princess Angeline as well as a whole bunch of other interesting um, stories, lots and lots of interesting stories in here, that I'll tell you, I mean, again, Seattle's Market Ghost Stories, Mercedes Yeager. And, yeah, I absolutely recommend that. So, a special thanks to all of you for watching. And I would love to see you next time. You will probably see us skittering around in some other more active, less urban environment. Thank you. We'll see you next time.